Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to enable two factor authentication with a, a YubiKey hardware device. So let's get going. All right, so two factor authentication is uh, a no brainer these days when you want to protect your cryptocurrency accounts or your online mail accounts or your social media accounts uh, you want to have that second factor uh, to prevent anyone from compromising your account and in the past I've done some uh, videos on using the Google Authenticator which is one method of two-factor authentication so I heard about uh, YubiKey and U2F authentication and was intrigued and so um, I checked into it and um, I thought it might be a good augmentation to my security regime and I would like to share it with you. So uh, let's jump in. All right, so uh, the YubiKey is a hardware device and I've got my new one right here. Mm -hmm. But uh, this YubiKey, which is a small little uh, USB device, it's going to go into my computer. Uh, into a USB port and uh, so you wonder uh, we, we know about two-factor authentication uh, so why would you want to use uh, this little hardware device as opposed to your Google Authenticator so I stumbled upon this article here uh, by Trezor and they said you should never use Google Authenticator again and of course it's a bit self-serving because they're talking about their own product uh, you can use U2F uh, with uh, a Trezor device. You can also use it with a Ledger Nano S device and I tested it out but it's a little bit cumbersome to use those devices uh, because in order to activate them you have to enter your pin every time and that can be a little bit of a pain. So why uh, is this better? Uh, one of the uh, differences Google Authenticator uses a protocol called TOTP which is uh, or one-time password all right and the way that it works if you've ever watched your Google Authenticator app it generates codes periodically uh, about every 15 seconds or so and then you enter that code onto a website that you set up with two-factor authentication and you may think well how does that work well the way that it works is that when you set up your Google Authenticator account the website will uh, give you a secret right and they have that same secret so there's two secrets and then these two separate devices the website and your phone you're running Google Authenticator use a cryptographic algorithm to generate the code based on that shared secret and the current time so uh, it generates that code on the phone and then the server generates the code on its end and when you input the code, uh, they match and you gain access to the account. Now, there's a couple of weaknesses to this system. One is that this secret is shared. You both, the phone and the server, have the secret. So it is vulnerable to certain types of hacks. And especially if the website that you're dealing with isn't totally secure. Another weakness is that the code it has to be entered. That's basically an inconvenience. And then also when it's entered, it is entered in clear text. It is sent across the internet in clear text format, which is also a weakness. Now, the uh, FIDO U2F works a little bit differently. Your uh, FIDO device uh, has a cryptographic pair on there, a private and public key. So once you've set up the device, when you log into one of your accounts, the account will generate a challenge, right? And then uh, this device uses its private key to sign the challenge and send it back. And then the server uses the public key of this device to verify that it is in fact, or was in fact, signed by this device. So this is public key encryption. This is how blockchain works. And so it's a much more secure method. And uh, so uh, some of the advantages are we're not sending a code over ClearNet. We don't even have to type in a code. We're just going to press a button. And uh, there's no shared secret. 
the server has no idea what the private key of this device is. Uh, it only has the public key. So it's much more secure. And so I decided to try it out and we'll see how it works. I'm going to go through the setup with you. Now, what's the weakness of this? Well, the weakness of this is that I only have one of these. And if I lose it, it's gone, right? And then I'm going to have to go through that whole rigmarole of contacting every server that has this set up and convincing them that I'm me and to disable two-factor authentication. So here's our weak point, this one little thing. Google Authenticator can be backed up. I can back up my Google Authenticator codes, and if I lose my phone, then I can re-enable it on a new phone. So that's the weakness here, is that you only have this one thing. Now, you could uh, get a second one and use that as backup, uh, set them both up. On, so there are ways around it. But at this point, I only have one, and if I lose it, I'm kind of screwed. So let's get going. So we'll go back over here. Uh, to the website and uh, you know they're talking about the authentication uh, we all know two-factor authentication is much better um, and so uh, we register the key we're gonna tap the key when we sign in to our accounts and it will verify all right and it's already uh, you know a used protocol all over the world and there's lots of different ways we can use this YubiKey to verify our various accounts all right I'm going to start with my Google account. So let's get going. I'm going to set up a key. I happen to have a Nano, so a Nano 4. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose that. All right, and uh, I'll just go ahead and open it up. Pretty cool. So I'll start with my Google account. I'm going to click this little link here. All right, and it's going to walk me through the process. So uh, I'm going to go to my two-factor authentication section of my Google account. And this is my, I'll do the CryptoDad account. All right. And as you can see, I've already got Google Authenticator uh, set up on the phone and Google Prompt. <laughs> so we're going to add a new one. Right. I can scroll down here and uh, I'm going to add a security key. and make sure the security key is with you but not connected to your computer yet. We'll choose next. Now it wants me to insert this into my uh, USB port, which I will do. And then it wants me to tap that little... All right, so the key was inserted and recognized by my computer. All right, and I'll just name it what it is. Uh, it's the YubiKey 4, so I'll call that uh, YubiKey 4. And boom and so now that is the default method for me to sign in to my Google account and uh, that's really all there is to it let's kind of put it through its paces here and uh, I'm gonna try a cryptocurrency account so I don't see any of them really except these two so I'll go ahead and open a Kraken account All right, so I've got this uh, account set up. Now uh, I'm gonna enable the two-factor authentication. Uh, okay, so we'll just go over here to uh, security. And let's enable two-factor authentication. Authent authenticator app uh, or YubiKey is required. So let's use the YubiKey. So uh, I'm just gonna click this button and turn it on. I'm going to choose Setup with the YubiKey. Click in the input below and touch or tap your YubiKey. All right, so I just, <laughs> I touched it. All right, and I'm not going to update that. Okay, and it wants me to touch it one more time. And now I have two-factor authentication enabled on my Kraken cryptocurrency account and there you have it so uh, the YubiKey is a pretty cool piece of hardware that we can use to uh, enable two-factor authentication on our uh, cryptocurrency our email accounts uh, our social media accounts uh, so I highly recommend that you give it a try 
And if you have any questions about it, please uh, throw them up in the comments. I'd like to remind everyone that I have a uh, live stream every Friday night, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Please join me for the live Q&A in L.A. Throw out any questions that you have or just uh, sit back and relax and join the conversation. I look forward to seeing you there. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're watching on Steemit, please give me an upvote. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel on YouTube, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.